Hello and welcome. We're going to uh, start working on some of these sets that were gifted to me. And just because of the name Holocrafters, I'm going to start with this guy. Now, is this a true Holocrafters? It's got their name on it. This was made in supposedly 1953. Holocrafters was in business from 1923 to 1966, so about 13 years before they went out of business. Supposedly they made this, but it's obvious from the construction of this set that uh, they were struggling at this point. This set doesn't, it's, you know, an AM shortwave, all American 5, quote unquote, but. Uh, no RF amp on the front end and you know as an AM or a shortwave set this is not going to be much of a much of a performer but it's the Holocrafters so we're going to see if we can resurrect this and it's going to be a challenge I was warned by Vic that this set was in very rough shape before he sent it to me and had some missing pieces and it's one of these very early printed circuit boards and anybody who's dealt with these knows if you look at them cross-eyed the traces lift these were all hand laid out and uh, not very good quality I mean it's the technology from back in the day and like all of these sets that I've seen over the years, there's multiple places on here where traces have been replaced by pieces of wire. Now this doesn't even have all of the circuitry on board. The oscillator coil and antenna coil are mounted on this second board which plugs into the main board with a little four pin connector. Several of the traces on this board have been replaced with jumper wires and there's more broken traces here I'm going to have to deal with but that's okay um, we're up for the challenge I think we can save this guy because the important parts are here the antenna coils are here the oscillator coils are here and appear unbroken and there's also a coil on here that while somebody's been at it at some point uh, it's that it appears to be intact. I haven't taken any uh, resistance readings on it. All the tubes were missing, and you know I was warned of that beforehand before this set got here. But that's fine. I have all of the tubes in stock. I even have the necessary tube shields to install, so that's good to go. The speaker and the output transformer were missing. I have one of these universal output transformers and using my audio impedance meter I ran through the various combinations I have here of 4, 8, and 16 ohm speakers and this wants a 2.5 or 2.4 I forget I think it's a 2.4 this says 2.4 K ohm primary and a 4 ohm or 3.2 ohm secondary by going through the various combinations I can come up with a 2.4 K ohm primary using the brown and yellow connections on this in conjunction with an 8 ohm speaker so that's not a problem whether it's an 8 ohm or a 4 ohm speaker as long as I've got the 2.4 K on the primary we'll be good to go there so I've got an audio output transformer I've got a speaker, I've got the tubes, I've got the tube shields. I ran a preliminary check on the filter capacitors and their junk. Uh, that's a spray, I'm surprised. Uh, it appears to be all American parts on here. This is probably before they tried shifting over to Japan for construction. The, and there's only four other capacitors. There's one, two, three and four there's one on the backing here for this set we'll replace all of the capacitors we're just going to shotgun everything on this and get it over and done with 
I'll take a chance. Um, but they're all US made capacitors. So I suspect that this was one of the early attempts to manufacture in the US uh, using printed circuit board. My only real concern with this is the tube sockets because these early printed circuit board tube sockets tended to be extremely problematic but these appear to be fairly good quality uh, tube pins or you know connector pins we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, the tube sockets are okay I do see a lot of work I'm gonna have to do on the board but it doesn't concern me it's just mechanical stuff and we've got the schematic so we should be able to puzzle out anything that's missing Surprisingly, this set doesn't even have an internal antenna. You know, usually by the 50s, they were putting a loop and at least putting a loop antenna on the back, but this relies entirely on an external antenna for both AM and shortwave, which probably didn't make it a very popular set. I mean, like I say, it's it's obvious at this point they were struggling to uh, stay in business. The cabinet is dirty, but that will clean up. There's some pieces broken out. You can see the hole here probably. It's not real obvious, but there's a hole through the front where the piece is broken out on the back. The bosses for the speaker have broken completely out. And again, not an issue. I have the pieces in here for the speaker bosses and once that's glued back in that'll cover up 90 percent of the hole that's in there and the other four will all epoxy those in and uh, we'll have mounts with the speakers there's a chunk missing out of the cabinet here and it's cracked down the side but again that's not an issue you can't see that when it's standing up here so i will build a a mold along the edges here. I've successfully done this on a couple of other bake light sets. I'll build a mold and I'll fill this with JB Weld and when the mold is removed you end up with a nice shiny surface. I'll use uh, pieces of acrylic to make the mold and it'll peel right off the JB Weld. I've done this before. So I'll be able to at least reinforce this, fill that area in so there isn't a hole where you can get your finger up in. The back is intact, so we can put the back back on. There's a little chip missing here, but uh, worse comes to worse, I can drill these holes deeper and, and re-thread these, so I'm not too concerned about that. The front has me puzzled. It's got some pitting and corrosion on it, it's non-magnetic so at first I thought it might be brass however it's held in with weld studs with press-on clips and the weld studs are steel they're magnetic and you can't spot weld a steel weld stud to brass so I'm guessing this might be stainless I'm going to have to remove it and find out. Stainless with perhaps some kind of plating or coating on it. I don't know at this point. I'm going to have to be very careful in trying to polish this up because if that's just a plating or a paint and you go through it, you're finished. You're done. So I'll be extremely cautious. I'll get this thing out and work on the back side of it first and see what I'm up against. But uh, we'll leave that for later, a later video. And again, I, I know it can't be aluminum because you can't... I used to do this type of work before I got back into the electronics field. And you can't put a stud, steel stud, on the aluminum. Not readily, anyway. Not in the... In a, it just isn't done. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the rundown. First thing I'm going to do is recap this. Repair the wiring that's on this daughter board. And then we'll put the tubes in it and see what happens when we put some power on it. But I think, you know, confidence is high that this can be repaired and put back into, you know, 
into service to make a little dust set. And while we're here, I did take a look at a couple of these little Zenith battery portables just to see what I was up against. I've got a, a Sam's ordered for those. The front grill for these appears to be just from the weight and from the appearance I'm guessing that's absolutely solid brass uh, it's got a lot of mass to it so it, I you know I know it's not aluminum it's not magnetic so it's not steel and just from the appearance on the back here I'm gonna guess that these are solid brass so these will clean up the color of the corrosion too is another giveaway it's either a very heavy plating or uh, they're solid brass not so lucky with the rest of the parts on the cabinet this piece here was wired in the studs are broken off the back so I use it as my uh, sacrificial test piece and polished it up in another area and it appears to be from the color it almost looks like it's aluminum with a plating on it but that's all right. If I polish this up, put a high uh, luster polish on here, I've got some uh, brass colored paint. It's more of a tint on order. And if I paint those and then give them a couple of coats of tinted clear lacquer, they'll look just fine, as will these. These appear to be plated aluminum. Uh, they're certainly not brass. The one that I tested on, I'll there's one over there it just shines up like aluminum so we'll polish these up and give those the same treatment we'll give those the brass with the clear tint tinted clear over the top and they should come out all right the plastic cabinets uh, one of the, the one over there appears to be in pretty good shape at least the cover is in good shape and we'll pick the best body and polish it up once we've uh, oh and oh this one's got all the screws in it good because I noticed that cabinet the screws holding this inner part the, there's a loop antenna behind here as was popular on a lot of these sets when you brought it up the loop antenna came up to the top so we will uh, pull the best parts off the cabinets buff them up get rid of most of the scratches and if you give these a coat of clear lacquer later excuse me they'll look brand new you'll end up with a cabinet that looks great so I suspect that I'll be able to build one of these up and uh, get it running Oof, boy it's a beefy little chassis that's in there um, these are going to be a real treat to work on because <laughs> there's just no room in there um, Oh, and somebody's put a solid state diode across this selenium rectifier I just noticed. Yeah, that's been taken right out of circuit and there's a solid state diode in there. But uh, I'm going to actually try to get one of these running on battery. It takes a single D cell for the heaters or the filaments on these. I should be able to get, you know, four or five hours because I believe these are uh, 50 milliampers. For the heaters for the filaments I'll have to verify that but I think these are 50 milliamp so we got 50 100 150 and that'll be uh, another 50 so yeah it's about 200 milliamp years you figure a flashlight uh, the lamp is like 250 milliamp years in the flashlight and you can get several hours out of a flashlight with a fresh D cell so I should be able to get you know a few hours of operating time on battery it'll just be fun to have one of these that actually operates on battery and I should be able to put like uh, five nine volt batteries here I'll build something to hold five nine volt batteries should give me that I haven't got the schematic for this yet but I'm guessing it was 45 volts for the B cell and uh, so when the schematic when the SAMS gets here I'll verify that but I'm pretty sure it's 45 volts um, and of course all the capacitors in here are 400 volt because this also ran on uh, AC but uh, I'm not too concerned about that 
it'll be more fun running it on battery. This would be more of a uh, a show and tell piece, I think. But we should be able to clean one up and get it looking fairly close to brand new. So confidence is high on those too. I've got three of them. Anything that's faulty in there, I'm sure I can find a good part from another radio. Uh, what else? Oh, thankfully all of the, the knob and the dial indicator were all intact on this. Which incidentally, uh, that one that I pulled apart appeared to have a missing dial indicator. But these have an interesting... Uh, oh, here, I'm looking at the wrong side. There's a little pointer in there and there's a gear reduction. You can see how that operates. If I'm hoping that shows up. You can see the little indicator running around. But anyway, I'll be able to pull those pieces and put everything together. I should be able to get one good operational unit at least out of those, possibly two. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm looking forward to having one of those operating on batteries. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, shut down the video here there's no need for you to watch me soldering bits and pieces if I find anything interesting I'll uh, start the video again and we'll cover it but uh, other than changing parts I'm just going to move on here and repair what I can on the PC boards get the wiring fixed up and uh, then we'll bring you back for a power up and see what happens all right we're making progress here this has been completely recapped it just amazes me that 22 microfarad at 25 volt and the one that was actually on this side of the chassis was you know that tall and big around as my finger it's replaced by that guy and these were great big waxy paper caps And this is just a new old stock NEC that I had. Figured I'd use it. And we put in a uh, NTC resistor here. Take care of the surge on the inrush. We've repaired a few lifted traces and it's just a fact of life with these old circuit boards. You don't even have to I've opened them up where they obviously hadn't had any work on them, but just from vibration, you know, the heavy components had lifted traces off the board over the years. Now, this obviously has had some work done on it, but it wasn't horrible. We just had to uh, repair a few of them, put some nice soft silicon wires. These are the leads that will go out to the output transformer. And I replaced the power leads here with silicon wire so that a little easier to deal with, a little more flexible. And we have the daughter board repaired. We've put some strain relief here. Originally this, this is actually rotor cable that they're using and it's the same thing in the picture on the uh, on the SAMs. But there were no eyelets in the board where this was soldered in and from being handled, pulled in and pulled out all all of these traces had been lifted off of this board and uh, so oh and this plug was broken in fact I forgot to pull the little pieces out of here that I used to line up the uh, connectors or the uh, pin or the sockets for the connector you know, off of there when I glued this all together just to make sure everything lined up this was the this phenolic piece wasn't broken, but the one on the back was in two pieces and the four pins were just floating around. But uh, that's actually stronger than the original connector was. You can see here in this picture where I use these four little pieces of tube to line everything up. And then we uh, hot melt glued the back of it here just to make everything solid so that uh, it would stay together and now that we have the board installed oh we put these four screws here there's four 
aught 80 screws. I went through the holes that were in the board originally. These wires came in from the bottom. But uh, I put these four aught 80 brass screws in here and used them as mounting pins. Now this is good and solid. Uh, this, the board won't take any more damage. And I put a stand off here with a tie wrap so that it's strain relief. The, the wires or the solder joints won't take any flexing anymore. So hopefully that'll hold together. And uh, it's amazing. There's you got one, two, three, and four adjustments here to uh, line up the antenna tuning for this thing. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to take my best guess at the oscillator setting. Uh, <laughs> the antenna section on here has a trimmer but the oscillator section doesn't maybe there's just no way to uh, tweak it in I don't know I'll take a look at the alignment instructions after we get this thing powered up uh, I guess I ought to stick the tubes in it and we should bring the power oh, I gotta connect the uh, output transformer and then we'll uh, put some power to this and see if it wakes up and works we have all the tubes in. The tube shields are on. The daughter board's plugged in. I'm going to have to uh, go up into the plug that I built out of a hot melt glue and bore the uh, hot melt glue a little deeper. I had these plugged in to keep the uh, sockets clear clear and these were all the way up to the end of the crimp piece but these are considerably shorter than the pins on the board uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be making connection because these were pretty firmly plugged in but uh, should do for now I've got the uh, audio output transformer connected <laughs> oh, lots of bare wires hanging out over here but uh, we should be okay. Everything's separated. Shouldn't be, uh, let's see, what have I forgotten? Nothing, I think. Speaker's hooked up. Let's uh, take this rubber band off the cord and put some power to this puppy and see what happens here. We'll uh, stick this up here in the little power monitor. I don't know how much of this we can get in frame. I don't think I can get you over to the... Maybe I can just slide everything over here. Make sure none of my wires touch anywhere. There we go. We've got the uh, power meter up there on the top. Okay, the radio switches on volumes all the way up let me just double check here everything's okay we should be all right everything's well separated the variac is on okay moment of truth moment of truth there's 30 volts and i don't see any power being drawn yet no current at all. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. It just I think the needle was stuck. It just jumped up to uh, 100 milliamp years. We got 37 volts, 120. Okay. Yeah. I think the needle on the Heath kit was stuck. Starting to show its age. Okay, we're down to 100 milliamp here, so the tube filaments appear to be working. There's 90 mil. Yeah, it's dropping, dropping. Let's go up to 60 volts. Let's go for broke here. Still only 110 milliamp years. Only 53 volts. I won't expect any activity probably till at least 90. Is about 75, 120 milliamp years. I think we can crank it right on up. Current draw is looking good. Oh, oh, we 
we got stuff happening. I can hear the camera. All right, let me unplug that stupid camera. All right, stupid power supply is unplugged, and I moved you back a little bit. Let's turn this up. Yeah, now it's quiet. Let's uh, let's bring the voltage up. I hope I hear music. Don't know if you can hear that. I'm gonna go for broke here, full power. Oh, too high. Bring it back down, buddy. There's 120 volts. All right, we appear to be working. What's amazing is there's no antenna. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think this radio is going to surprise me. Uh, I was bad mouthing it because it didn't have an internal antenna or an RF preamp, but uh, I think this would probably receive with a wet string for an antenna. Good grief, there's no antenna on it at all. And it hasn't had an alignment or anything. I'm just getting close to it. I haven't touched it yet, I'm just close to it. Wow. Alright. <laughs> That's a pleasant surprise. I'll tell you. I am uh, totally amazed at how... How well this is pulling in. Okay, now that I know everything's working, I think the next thing I'm do going to do is concentrate on repairing the cabinet. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing an on, on camera alignment. I mean, you guys have seen thousands of those. But uh, I'm going to concentrate on getting this cabinet cleaned up and put together, glued back together, figure out a mount. For my audio output transformer, I might just mount it on the back of the radio here. There's uh, already a bunch of holes. I can probably pick a couple of holes and put the audio output transformer right on the back behind the speaker. I'll f <coughs> Excuse me. I'll figure something out. But uh, I'm going to move on to the cabinet if you don't mind. So we'll see you. Uh, when I get my forms built and get my JB weld port in there. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to turn the camera back on. I flipped it over to short wave. Now the only thing I'm using for an antenna is my finger here. That's the 40 meter ham band.
That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, on to the cabinet. 